Hello, uh, my name is John for Through the Eyes of George. Today I thought I would share with you a perspective of the modern presidency through the eyes of George Washington. Now, obviously there are things that are different in George Washington's time than in our culture in 2020. Uh, the language uh, and how it's spoken is a little bit different. Technology is different, culture, music, art, uh, academia. Uh, all of those things are slightly different. Some ways they're different, uh, bigger than others. But there is essentially nothing new under the sun when it comes to the modern presidency. A book I highly suggest you read uh, about George Washington is called Mr. President by Harlow Giles Unger. It gives a fantastic perspective of some of the things that George Washington did in precedence he set as our first president of the United States. For one, uh, uh, the, something that George Washington set a precedent in, it would be campaigning. Some people may say that he didn't campaign, which is true because he was unanimously elected twice by uh, uh, the electorate. Now, what he did, however, in terms of campaigning, after he became president, he took two tours of one of the northern uh, United States and the second of the southern United States. And he learned a lot about the people in which he was governing. And it really showed, uh, after reading a book uh, by uh, T.H. Breen, called uh, George Washington's Journey, I really saw the weight in which George Washington had upon his shoulders as being president. He saw the, the great responsibility, I guess you could say, in terms of being president after those two tours. That's just kind of what I saw after reading that book. Now, another thing in terms of campaigning, campaign slogans. Well, in terms of being 2020, and uh, we're going to have a presidential election this year, now Donald Trump, his first campaign slogan was, Make America Great Again. Now, that came, he may have uh, made that slogan in some kind of way by himself, but parts of that slogan actually started with Ronald Reagan, and then with Bill Clinton. Bill, Cl Bill Clinton used that slogan, Make America Great Again, in his 1991 uh, presidential announcement. Uh, all of my sources in this video I'll put in the description below. And don't forget to click subscribe or click the notification bell or click like if you like this video. Now, another thing uh, that George Washington did in terms of uh, the modern presidency is communicate to the public. He wrote copious amounts of letters and correspondence with all kinds of people. Obviously, they didn't have TV or the telegraph or anything like that. But the technology that George Washington had was he could uh, do a public announcement uh, in the newspaper, which he did a couple times or a few times, or write letters and correspondence. Now, uh, in terms of the modern presidency, Abraham Lincoln uh, used the telegraph a lot to um, get his message out. Uh, McKinley uh, did a, a short film, uh, you could say, to, to talk about, or not talk about himself, but to show about himself as a president. Calvin Coolidge, my favorite president besides uh, George Washington, Said, uh, was the first president to use the radio to get his message out. Eisenhower was the first president to uh, have a uh, to use the television in terms of like uh, announcements and stuff like that. And uh, former President Obama was the first president to use a tweet. Now there are many other presidents who've done other firsts in technology. That's just a a synopsis on that. Um, and I, I have some of my sources on that. Um, in my description below. 
Now, I say all that because our current president, Donald Trump, does use Twitter to get his message out. And I see why, to an extent, Donald Trump uses Twitter. Because the uh, mainstream media, uh, academia, um, all kinds of people are against Donald Trump. Just outright. Uh, and it's... You know, I can see how frustrating it could be to a president in not being able to get your message out, your side of the story, uh, on any issue or another. Now, the thing is, is that all presidents are not with con are are not without controversy. That's what I meant to say. Now, Donald Trump could afford to tweet a little less or maybe tweak his syntax or diction or vocabulary in his tweets. But all presidents have misspoken in one way or another. You can't say that everybody, every president is perfect in terms of character. Because if we're going to say that Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, William McKinley, Calvin Coolidge, George Washington, FDR... Woodrow Wilson, Abraham Lincoln, all of them, uh, they have great character. Or some of them have great character. But Donald Trump, oh my gosh, the division was so bad, it started with Donald Trump. That is a lie. Think about the things that happened in, the 19, uh, in 1917 during World War I, in the 1940s and in the 1960s. The things that Woodrow Wilson did in terms of he played the uh, he played uh, what's that movie called A Birth of a Nation at the White House. Now, um, what's that guy's name? Lyndon B. Johnson um, was known for having and using uh, language, uh, uh, racial language, you could say, but still passing civil rights laws to help. Um, against those things. Now, and then also you could say, um, well, those are just examples that come to my mind right now. Now, I say all that because, yes, every, and I say that because it's not new for a president to misstep in his communication or his language to the American people or in private at the White House. It's not new. So for Donald Trump to do that, yes, his vernacular and his diction is different than other presidents, but it's not a new thing. Now, with regard to executive privilege, George Washington obviously will always be the first in a lot of things, but he was the first to assert executive privilege with regards to uh, private correspondence that he had with others during the uh, making of the Jay Treaty. Now, George Washington agreed that the Jay Treaty uh, was not perfect, but he wanted peace with Great Britain because they just fought a war. They just fought a war. And that trade deal was not perfect, but he wanted peace. Now, Think about this for a second. There are many presidents, almost all of them have cited executive privilege. To name a few, George Washington, Grover Cleveland, Richard Nixon, George W. Bush, uh, Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump has been cited or has had articles of impeachment against him. One of those two articles was an obstruction of Congress for not complying with the House Oversight Committee. Now, Donald Trump cited executive privilege in that, in, in his correspondence and, and other things that conspired and uh, communications he had. Um, now, George Washington, under that foundation or that... Um, goalpost being moved in terms of what is the new normal for what is right and not right for obstructing Congress, George Washington should have been impeached.
That's right. George Washington should have been impeached. But on March 30th, 1796, George Washington sent a letter to Congress specifically towards the House of Representatives saying, essentially, you may not have my private correspondence that I've had in the making of the Jay Treaty. I've given up all of the correspondence and information that you need to make your decision about appropriating the money for the Jay Treaty. If you don't um, agree with that, then impeach me. Essentially, that's what George Washington said on March 30th, 1796. I'll leave that information in my description below. Now moving forward, I, uh, moving into in, in the topic of impeachment. Impeachment is not something that's new uh, in terms of it being talked about. Now, from what I can see, the mainstream media, <coughs> the mainstream media and many other news outlets have talked about this impeachment and the character of Donald Trump a lot. But there's more to America than impeaching a president. What about our inner cities? What about our fatherless homes? What about our educational system? What about our infrastructure? What about protecting our borders? What about protecting our families, our communities? What about our families? There's more to news than impeachment. That's a word of advice to any news outlets that watch this video. Now... There is, like I said before in this video, there is no president that is without controversy. George Washington had it. And he had it in terms of collusion. Now, you want to talk about collusion with a foreign government. Edmund uh, Randolph colluded with a foreign government, took money to undermine the, the administration of George Washington. Edmund Randolph was on George Washington's cabinet. Another uh, uh, um, example of collusion with a foreign government, actual collusion that can be proved, is Edmund Gannett came over from France uh, to help the United States. Later, he was proven to be essentially to trying to take over and undermine and destroy the administration of George Washington and uh, he was dealt with accordingly uh, by George Washington's administration and George Washington. All of this information that I've talked about George Washington is in that book I cited, Harlow Giles Unger's book called Mr. President. Now, I say all these things with authority about George Washington and the modern presidency because I myself, um, before I started this channel, I read about 15 George Washington biographies. Since then, I have read two more uh, George Washington biographies, which would make that 17. And I have over 48 George Washington biographies for research to look through because uh, there's different perspectives from different biographers and I've also have other uh, biographies of other presidents um, in that time uh, period of other founders and other presidents of the modern era. Now I say all that because when you look at George Washington's life and the things he dealt with having terrible terrible health terrible health by, by all of today's standards, he should have died for all the diseases he had. But his belief in wanting to live helped him to stay alive. Now, he, he did other things to help his health that were available for him in that time period as well. And he was just kind of lucky uh, to live to the age of 67. Now... George Washington knew that the he knew the paramount responsibility it was to be president to lead by example and one and the reason why I love Calvin Coolidge 
right up next to George Washington is because Calvin Coolidge's approach to the presidency was to have a distinct separate uh, separation of powers between the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. You really see that in Calvin Coolidge's administration. Now, there are some things that Calvin Coolidge uh, did that I don't agree with, but as a modern president, I think Calvin Coolidge is one of the best presidents in the modern era in terms of setting the example of what it means to truly be a president in the modern era. And with all that being said, I highly encourage all of you uh, to read more, uh, to educate yourself on what is actually going on and not just uh, look at one news source or two news sources. Look at a myriad of news sources because, <coughs> excuse me, fake news didn't start with uh, the t in the time era or time period of 2015, 2016, uh, Donald Trump getting elected and the transfer of power between President, former President Obama and President-elect uh, Donald Trump. It wasn't that. Fake news started in George Washington's administration. It started in... Where it started where Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton had newspapers uh, that were um, made and publishing stories about each other. Slanderous, def uh, def deflammatory stories about each other. These newspapers uh, were run by uh, other people, but they, the, the brain and the, and the stories that would come out of these two newspapers the Gazette of the United States and the United States Gazette, um, they were just publishing stories that were just absolutely false about each other, Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson. And another thing with regards to international politics, George Washington was right. George Washington was right with regards to uh, being weary of foreign permanent foreign alliances with other nations or other governments. Now, George Washington would uh, most likely have to get over the fact that this is in 2020. This is a global world, very connected through technology, that we will have some kind of global organization like uh, the United Nations or NATO or in the United States, we have uh, the agreements we have. We're, we're trying to get USMCA passed. We did have NAFTA or do have NAFTA. Um, but George Washington most likely would have to get over that. I do, however, believe that George Washington would not want to be as involved in the United Nations uh, as we are as the United States. And as involved in NATO because if people don't really care what we say they listen to us because we give them billions of dollars but are they really listening to us yes there are tons of blemishes that the United States has excuse me but that doesn't mean that we haven't done many good things for the American people and for the world um, now all of these sources in terms of uh, international politics, um, impeachment, things about uh, communication, uh, campaign slogans, I'll leave in my description below. Thank you for watching this video. I know this was uh, a little bit longer than usual. I just wanted to uh, sit down with you and talk to you about some things that were on my mind about the modern presidency through the eyes of of George Washington. Thank you for watching this video and uh, looking forward to the next one.